In the last lesson, we talked about the history behind point and figure charts. In this one, we're going to talk about how they are formed and what we're looking at when we are looking at these X's and O's. So if you bring up point and figure charts on your trader workstation, you're going to see X's and O's. And one of the main reasons that they did this is because when we talked about how old this style of charting is, it was much easier when you're sitting down on graph paper, write an O, write an X, as opposed to drawing out something fancy like a candlestick pattern or something like that. The other big thing to note that we talked about in the last episode is that we're not talking about time here. We're talking about price movement. So you're not sitting down once a day and drawing out a candle or drawing out a line or connecting dots on a line. What you're doing is you're waiting for a certain amount of price movement, and then you're doing the uh, the new X or the new O. Lastly, X's always mean a move higher. O's always mean a move lower, and that makes everything real simple and universal to look at. So in this particular kind of sample chart we had, we had a little bit of move down, a little bit of move up, kind of consolidation, move down, and then some sort of gap down and a move up. But again, we'll go over more details. We're gonna look at kind of more actual charts here. So when you go to Trader Workstation, you are presented with this particular kind of setup right here. And you can do basic things, color your chart, whatever you'd like. Again, because X's always mean up, O's always mean down, color's not super important one way or another. Um, but what the main thing we need to look at is box size. So what box size means is what we need to look at in order to have draw a new X or to draw a new O. So right here I have traditional selected, which means that we're talking about dollars and I have a box size of one. So what this means is that every new, say we're, there's an X is the last thing we see on the screen. Every time we move up a dollar in whatever instrument I'm looking at, there'll be another X. And the same as if we have an O, every dollar that we move down, there will be a new O. The net last setting right here, reversal amount, is when we switch from X's to O's. In this case, I have a reversal amount of three. So that takes the box size and it multiplies it by that reversal amount. So in this case, if we're seeing a lot of X's, in order for us to switch and start a new column that will print O's, we need three moves down. So we need three times whatever our box size is. So three boxes down, which in this case would be $3 just to keep it nice and simple. So here we have a chart of Apple. Uh, we can focus right here on the most recent price action. So we are getting an X in this case every time we move up one dollar and you can see the settings that exist up here right traditional one and three so every time we have an x every time apple moves up a dollar we're going to put another x now the beauty of it is you notice that i didn't mention time so whether it takes a minute or it takes an hour it takes a week it takes a month doesn't matter we are not doing anything until we have the movement higher. So every time there is a dollar movement higher, we are printing a new X. Now for us to switch to O's, we need to pull back or we need to move lower $3. And what this does, is it cuts down a whole lot of noise. In this particular bar of X's, if you look at this on a candlestick chart, there could have been all kinds of gyrations and movements up and down and things that could scare out investors and news events and all of this. But we didn't get a $3 move down, so our point and figure chart remains XXX, right? And now X is all the way up until we have a $3 move down, and then we start to print O's. So then every dollar down after our first O, we are pushing down $1, and then same when we reverse higher again. We needed a $3 push higher, and then we started to print X's again. So you can see how because of what we need to have happen in order to print a new data point on the chart, we're not really reacting to very small and short-term price movements. We can avoid those entirely until we have a move that is substantial to us 
and you can create these own settings your, yourself in your chart. If you're someone who a $5 move on Apple or your investment is more interesting to you and you want a $15 move down before you react, great. You can set up your chart that way. You look at your chart and as long as it remains X's, then you know you haven't had that pullback that's been interesting to you and you can move on. So again, the point of point and figure charts to me anyway, as a technical analyst, is to remove a lot of noise to make sure I'm not paying attention to small ticks up and down that a lot of investors get really, really emotional and excited about. I can simply go and I can look at my chart. I can have my chart up, trade a workstation. And as long as it is printing in whatever direction I'm interested in, if I am short O's, if I am long X's, then I'm completely ignoring everything else and just waiting for that moment to occur to take action based off whatever plan I have built on the X's or O's. So that's the basic setup of the chart. Again, very easy to set up because you're not worried about time anymore. You are just worried about price intervals.